Hi, Francis. It's great to talk to you. I remember in a presentation that you did, you showed an image of 4.75 planets, and that depicted how many planets we would need a year if every country consumed the way Canadians did. And you're doing a lot of incredible work to change that. So tell me more about it. Sure. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, if everybody was as wasteful as Canadians, we would need 4.75 planets to support them. But of course, we don't have 4.75 planets, so uh, that's why we need to be thinking about the circular economy. And in particular, what's wasteful is when we when we use the linear economy, which is how our system works today. So we dig something out of the ground and our extractive industries of farming and mining are responsible for 50% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions and 80% of the species loss. So we dig this stuff out of the ground. Last year was 100 billion tons of material. We make something out of it and we use it in some cases for a very short period of time, like a plastic stir stick. And then we throw it back in a hole in the ground. And that's very wasteful with all those greenhouse gas emissions and species impacts. Um, so what we're trying to do is move to a circular economy where if we dig something out of the ground, we make something with it that lasts a long time. We use it for as long as possible before we eventually take it back and recycle it and put everything that was in it back into circulation again. 100 billion tons of materials wasted a year, and that's uh, under the linear economy, which is very un unsustainable. Mm -hmm. How else could the circular economy help to fight climate change? Well, if you uh, take an example of an average PC, if you can give, uh, you know, if somebody buys a brand new PC and they keep it for four years, let's say, if they could give that PC two years of extra life, that would decrease the carbon footprint by 30%. Now, that's pretty cool. It doesn't mean you have to keep an older PC, but there are lots of people who could use a secondhand or gently refurbished computer or any other product. I use that example because we have the footprint data, but any other product that you use, uh, if you can keep it for longer, keep it in use as long as possible, then make sure it gets recycled responsibly. We're, Canadians are really good at wish, wish cycling, which is, hmm, I've used this and I think it should be recyclable, but I'm not sure I'm going to put it in the recycling bin anyway. And what you do is you ruin that batch of recyclables. So be very, very sure before you put something in the recycling bin that it is recyclable. Mm -hmm. So how can a business like HP adopt the circular economy? So we've made a commitment to go entirely circular. And what we're going to do is a whole bunch of things. And it starts with design, designing your products to be offered as a service, to be the um, uh, upgraded, to, to last longer, to be more durable, and then when they do come back to make sure that they are 100% recyclable. But then you have to offer the services that go with that. So changing from selling products to selling services. And that sounds easy to do, but it takes a bit of, uh, a, bit of a, uh, a rethink of how you're running your business. And then, of course, we've made some commitments like 30% uh, post-consumer recycled plastics across our entire product portfolio by 2025, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So how has you know, HP, after adopting a circular economy, enable HP and its customers to reduce its carbon footprint? Well, customers expect us to just take care of it for them. They don't want to have to think about this. So if you can come up with something like Instant Ink, which is a consumer home printing solution for ink printing, um, you sign up to a subscription service so you never have to go to the store again to get your ink. You, the, the printer orders it when you're getting low. It gets shipped to you automatically in less packaging, uh, in bigger cartridges, and there's a bag in there for you to return the empty ones to us so we can put those back into our plastics recycling process and they can keep going around. So when it's easy for the customer and cheaper and more convenient and better for the business and has a lower carbon footprint, that is the sweet spot for the circular economy. So we need to be thinking about maximum utilization of materials uh, as well as that end of life piece and recycling that uh, Canadians love so much. What challenges do you think business will need to overcome to adopt the circular economy or to go into a uh, sustainable procurement? Um, so it is the procurement is the signal into the marketplace. And today that is largely missing in Canada. Um, for some reason, and I don't really know why, Canadians are doing a lot less, even though we think of ourselves as being a more sustainable country, we're doing a lot less in the procurement end of things. And uh, given that we only have 10 years to fix or get climate change, climate catastrophe under 
under control, this is a, a very critical lever that we have that we're not using to really address this issue. So really focusing on how much carbon you're bringing in uh, to your organization, how much you use, and then what you can do to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. And how do you think an individual consumer like myself can actually contribute to help businesses um, adopt a circular economy or um, you know, using a sustainable procurement? Um, so it is about thinking the value, the total value when you're buying something. Every dollar you spend sends a signal into the marketplace. And it's very tempting to buy cheap disposable items. But at the end of the day, uh, in my head, I think of cheap, ultra convenient climate catastrophe. That's how I think of it. <laughs> and I, we laugh about it. But that's really what, you know, that's buying with the cheapest thing we can buy today has led to a linear economy, which is how we've gotten into the mess that we're in. I mean, it's not the only reason, but it, it, it sends all the wrong signals to, to anybody who's making something. So if we want something that's durable, repairable, longer lasting, we have to be prepared to think about buying it as a service, which you know will uh, ease that, that price, potential price increase, but uh, thinking about all parts of the product life cycle too, not just, oh, we get it in the door and we don't worry about what happens to it and you know technology is a very good example of that because we need to be concerned about data privacy as well as environmental impacts of uh, end of first life products. <laughs>